Hello and welcome to another Video Mana podcast. I'm Pastor Jeff Glenn and it's my pleasure to take you through the Word each week. We're in, we're in Genesis and we're just coming out of uh, chapter 28 and kind of finishing up that chapter. This was when Jacob had his dream of, of the ladder and that really exposed him to, to the truth that, that man's access to heaven is limited and, and divinely controlled. So meaning that, that man... He doesn't provide, we don't provide access to, or we don't control access, or we certainly don't maintain access to heaven. That's um, a prerogative of God. And so um, after this, we see that, that Jacob sets up a memorial stone, the, actually the stone that he was using to sleep on, and he anoints it with oil, and he calls the place Bethel, meaning the house of God. And, and he makes this vow before the Lord, recognizing God with him, and pledging that based on the Lord's providence, um, that he would be his God. So this is quite a breakthrough uh, for Jacob. And it's actually the first time in the Bible that, that someone um, commits a vow to the Lord. And um, in every other action, we see that it's God who's the one who's instituting or, or upholding his covenant. And so there is a difference between a vow and a covenant. We see that, that this vow is, is made by Jacob, but it's based on the Lord's providence in Jacob's lives. He's recognizing that for the first time, and so it seems, right? And so um, then from this scene, Jacob heads back into the land of his parents to find himself a wife. And that brings us into chapter 29. And upon his arrival, he spots a well, and he sees that there's some flocks gathered around with some, with some shepherds, and they're all waiting to be watered. And, and it's at this point of the story that it kind of feels a little bit like a flashback when you're reading through that. And as always, make sure that you read through this. And if you haven't, stop now and read through it. But, but we see that this feels like a little bit of a flashback, like to when Abram had sent his servant back into the same land to find a bride for Isaac. And so it, it's, it's unlikely that it's actually the same well because the two wells were, were described located in different areas. But um, the, the story feels familiar because of the way it's set up, but it's really, it's not for the well and it's not for the, the flocks that are gathered around it or even it's not even the beautiful shepherdess that, that comes to water her flocks, that, that um, is the one who the, the man falls in love with. All that's true, and it's very similar indeed, for sure. But the most striking similarity, similarity here is how God is the superintendent of this story. And we see that, that how he provides for his will to be done. And so it's at this point that, that Jacob is introduced to Rachel. She comes to 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 water her flocks. And we learn that she is the daughter of Laban, who is Jacob's uncle, which is actually his, his mom's um, brother. And we, we were introduced to Laban back when, um, in, in the other story that we talked about. And so um, we see that, that sending Jacob back to his parents' homeland was, was the preferred arrangement to prevent marrying a Canaanite woman, which would, if that would have happened, would um, bring idolatry into the family. And so they wanted to prevent that. They wanted to prevent idolatry from coming in to the family. And so when Laban hears of this news, he runs to greet Jacob. And um, he greets him with all the familial um, hospitality and, and greeting that he, that he can muster. He's happy to see um, his, his nephew, which he probably hasn't ever seen, but he's happy to hear that one of his relatives has come back. And so, but it's at this point that we see the deceitfulness and the self-preservation, that it, that trait runs in the family. Because we remember previously with Rebecca and, and the incident where she was coaching Jacob to get the blessing from Isaac that Esau deserved. And so this was, this was Rebecca coaching him to do that for her own uh, purposes uh, because she loved Jacob over, over Esau. And now we'll see that in, in Laban. So this is a family trait. And so Laban, knowing Jacob's love for Rachel, he sets in motion this plan that, that leaves Jacob kind of disoriented and, and vulnerable and, and taken advantage of ult ultimately. And um, 
we see in this arrangement that, that Jacob is the first to offer um, to work for Laban for seven years for Rachel. This is how much he, he was fond of her and loved her. And, um, but Laban wanted to marry off his oldest daughter, Leah, because she, she wasn't as attractive as Rachel, and, and that is the custom in, in that time, was uh, to, to marry off the firstborn and then down the line and so forth. And so we see that Jacob did indeed faithfully work his, his seven years. And when that time came, Laban threw this big wedding party, and while it's not explicit, it's probable that wine was involved. And this would help explain the next kind of couple of passages, along with the fact that, that during that time that they only had, um, you know, maybe um, lamplight or firelight, and and um, especially if it's overcast or a new moon, the, it can be incredibly dark when you're out in the um, desert. So we see that w- when the night came for the bride to be given uh, to Jacob, that Laban threw the old switcheroo, so he switched out. So during the party, it, it was Rachel at the party, and they were doing all of the, the festivities. And then at night, he switched out Rachel for Leah. And so he sends Leah into the wedding chamber or the tent or whatever. The, they were there to consummate the marriage. And they did indeed consummate the marriage. And in the morning, Jacob was, was shocked and aghast and um, incensed at Laban for... for um, for tricking him in this way, and and he insisted that he be allowed to work for Rachel's hand as well. And so Laban, here we see him, he had deceived the deceiver. And um, when we look back to last week's um, kind of play on words, that little bit of a theme that we had with the sight, remember that that how Jacob saw? Well, here we see that because of um, maybe the festivities of the wedding, but for sure uh, the darkness. He wasn't, he wasn't able to see this treachery, and um, he, was, he was deceived, and now he ends up with a wife that he didn't want, but he's still wanting to work uh, for, Rachel, for Rachel's hand. And so Laban agrees and uh, allows um, Jacob to work for another seven years, and, and even at the end of this, Jacob worked another seven years on top of that. So, so a, a total of 21 years that Jacob worked uh, because he loved Rachel. And so, um, ladies, make sure that you get yourself someone who loves you like Jacob loved Rachel. Um, the, the interesting part about all of this is we see that the Lord, he works in spite of this marital mess uh, by allowing Leah to conceive while Rachel was barren. And, and we see the Lord working out his plan through his sovereignty despite all this messiness. Eventually, the, the, these two, Leah and Rachel, will become the mothers of the tribes of Israel. Um, but as we'll see in chapter 30, it's not without continued angst. Um, but we see chapter 29 closing out after Leah has, has bore four sons, um, Reuben is the first, Simeon, then Levi, and Judah. And it's very interesting that God, he doesn't let this hurt go to waste, right? We know that Leah was, was unattractive and unloved, yet the, the Levites, her son, the, the offspring of her son, Levi, they would become the priests in the temple later on, serving God, and then later, even still, that the Messiah would come through Judah. And so... Leah was the firstborn, but she wasn't the first chosen. And uh, she probably never would have been chosen, but for her father's uh, deceitful treatment of Jacob. And it's, it, it's, it's interesting that it's exactly who God chose uh, to further his plan to provide for the Messiah and to bless the nations. And so, you know, there's plenty of hurt to go around in this chapter, and in chapter 30, we'll, we'll continue to see some of that as Rachel is able to finally conceive and her contribution to the tribes of Israel. And so, you know, while you may not feel like anyone's first pick, just know that God can still use you, and He certainly will. So, until next week, stay encouraged and stay in the Word.